We want to know what happened. We want to grieve. We want closure. She was the rock that kept her family strong, but nearly 20 years ago, Doris and Zunza vanished from her Rancho Cordova home. Today, there's a renewed effort to solve this cold case. We dig into this decades-old mystery, asking whatever happened to Doris. She was a mom and a sister and a friend. My sister was super smart. She's a bright cookie. She was a survivor. She was strong-willed. Doris Nzunza was a fighter. A little more than 100 pounds and just about five feet, she stood tall for women looking to escape an abusive relationship, helping to establish a group called Sacramento Survivors of Stalking. She told them, don't take it. Just don't take the abuse. Don't take it. You have a voice. Speak. S stand up for your rights. Doris spoke through experience. She was being stalked by, according to some of the family members and co-workers, by one of the ex-boyfriends. A man roughly 20 years older than Doris, who has this paperwork obtained by CBS 13 News shows the Sacramento County Sheriff's Department was well aware of. Doris had filed police reports and had obtained a restraining order against him following the breakup. Doris's sister Lisa tells us she heard the threatening phone calls he's accused of making after Doris told him it was over. Some of those messages included, you didn't marry me, you're not going to marry someone else. She had planned to remarry someone else. In fact, this single mother of four boys was just two weeks away from her wedding day. By all accounts, she was very happy, excited. Um, things seemed to be going well for Doris. We're asking for the public's help in locating Doris and Zunza. And then it all disappeared. August 26th of uh, 1997. She had gone away for the weekend, and somehow her spare refrigerator in the garage was unplugged. The meat and other items in the fridge had spoiled. It caused a smelly mess. So Doris opened up the garage to her Rancho Cordova home to air it out. Here's what a friend and neighbor told CBS 13 at the time. Last I saw her, she was going into her garage. She was cleaning out her garage that night. The next morning, her sister got a phone call from Doris's work. It was her best friend calling saying, She's not here and she hasn't called and you know, that's not like her. She was nowhere to be found. So throughout that day, um, nobody knew where she was. They kept thinking she was out running errands. That night is when things, they realized it was, perhaps there was foul play. Okay, we're gonna be calling them all out then. Search teams on horseback in the air and on the ground would find nothing. Doris's sister Lisa, as she does to this day, spoke on her family's behalf that hot August night. We've exhausted all our resources as we continue to search for Doris. And in the months that would follow, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Friends and neighbors held candlelight vigils keeping any flicker of hope alive. As time goes by, the family realizes what we're running up against, and, and we realize that the chances of getting Doris back alive diminish, but we're not giving up hope. It's been nearly 20 years. It's been difficult, but you learn to live with it. This is the front of her house. Retired detective Sacramento County Sheriff Sergeant Mickey Lynx has not given up hope. To this day, we have not found um, one piece of evidence uh, of Doris's clothing or her or anything. She does more than just thumb through the pages of Doris's story, working on this cold case whenever she can, coming to one conclusion. There's nothing that supports anything but the fact that she was abducted and taken out of that house. But by who? Doris's sister feels her abductor left a clue her engagement ring, which her family says she never took off her finger, was left on her bedroom nightstand. He took her, and that ring on the nightstand was very, very, a very clear indication that, see, she didn't marry him, and she's not going to marry him. Doris didn't fight. Law enforcement and her family both believe because she was doing what she had always done 
trying to protect her loved ones. And if she wasn't physically abducted, uh, I believe that maybe somebody threatened either her life or her kids' lives um, to make her go with them. And the moment he threatened to hurt the kids, she put her hands up, what do you want me to do? And I know in my heart that's what happened. Detectives searched her ex-boyfriend's home and car at the time, but didn't find anything solid enough to make an arrest. To this day, he has not been ruled out. In putting this story together, we made several attempts to contact him, but didn't hear back. And all I've been told by detectives is that there's circumstantial evidence. If we recover her body, we can match things up. But without a body, we don't have evidence against him. But finding Doris's body for her family isn't so much about finding justice. It doesn't matter who did what, that's not important. We want to know, we want to find her body, we want to mourn her loss and move on. And we have not had that opportunity. They talk of the anguish their mother took to her grave after finding out her daughter was missing and what she told detectives. She says, I want my daughter. I don't care if it's a little piece of bone, a hair. That's my daughter. I have a right to bury her. I have a right to give her closure, a burial, something. But after nearly two decades, nothing has erased the pain. There's a huge part of your heart always missing. And the same words spoken days after she disappeared, sadly, still ring true today. I hope they find her. I hope they find her.